Hey everyone, Charles here. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I want to talk about a problem I encountered recently in regard to my cloud storage. So I have terabytes and terabytes of data. It was going to cost me a lot more to expand my Dropbox than it would be to get a second cloud service provider. So I ended up going with Dropbox and Google Drive, but I needed to transfer some of my Dropbox files over to Google Drive. I found out that this wasn't as simple as I hoped it would be without downloading those files locally to my machine. Now with many terabytes of data, I don't really have the local storage to be able to do that. Additionally, it was gonna cause me a lot of manual labor. So a tool that I found that will perform this is called rclone. So in this video, I wanna take a look at how you set that up, how you can get that to interact with your various cloud service providers, and how you can use that to easily clone data between those different cloud instances. Let's jump in and take a look. So as I said, my Dropbox folder currently is almost full. I have almost three terabytes of data inside of there, and I've reached the point where I would have to upgrade to a tier that would cost me almost three times as much per month. So the solution that I've done instead of doing that, I have paid for a Google Drive subscription that gives me two terabytes, and that works out to be much cheaper to use both of those services as opposed to only one service. So that left me with the problem of how do I download all of these terabytes of data and transfer some of those over to Google Drive. Now, in my case, I didn't have any external storage available to download all of those Dropbox files. I keep those online only versions. I don't store those locally. So I didn't wanna go through the trouble of having to try and download those individually, move them over to Google Drive, then delete them off of my local drive. It was just going to be a long, tiresome process. So I found this solution called rclone. You can see the website here at rclone.org. And this program is designed to manage files on cloud storage and to interact between different cloud vendors. So it's really handy, it's free. I've really liked this tool. So I wanted to show you how I use that to transfer information easily between my cloud instances. This is the download page that we're looking at. And of course, you'll see installers for Windows, Mac OS, for Linux. If you scroll down, you'll of course see some command lines, some terminal commands for installing that as well, which is the method that I'm going to walk you through here. Now I am on an Ubuntu machine, and this is actually a virtual machine that I can leave running in the background to take care of this. I didn't even bother installing this on my local machine. I just got a free Ubuntu virtual machine, and I'm going to use that to transfer this data. So let's take a look at how we could do that. First off, how do we install our clone inside of Ubuntu? And it's very simple to do if you're familiar with using package managers like apt inside of Linux. All I have to do is say sudo apt install our clone and hit enter. This is going to prompt me for my sudo password. So I'll put that in. And then you can see, of course, in my case, I have zero newly installed because I already have our clone in place, but I wanted to show you the command. Another helpful thing that rclone has is something called an rclone browser. This gives you a graphical user interface to be able to interact with those cloud instances if you prefer to do that rather than using the command line interface. So I'm going to arrow up and I'm also going to say sudo apt install rclone dash browser. Once again, you'll see I have zero newly installed because I do already have that on my system. And let's go ahead and open up the rclone browser. You can see that that comes up here. And by default, that's going to load our remotes page. You can see our remotes tab here at the top. And of course, at the moment, that is empty. And when it says remote, it's referring to a remote cloud instance. So this is where we're going to add in our cloud providers. And to do that, you'll notice a config button here at the bottom. When we click that, it's going to open up our terminal and it's going to walk us through the configuration for a new remote. So of course the option that I want to choose is in for new remote. It wants us to give that a name. That name is locally relevant, something that we would recognize when we look at that in our rclone browser. So I'll start with Dropbox and I'm just going to name that Dropbox so that I know what it is. I'll hit enter. Now it's asking me for what type of storage is this? And you can see it outputs a long list of possibilities which rclone can interact with. You'll see OneDrive listed here. We can see our Google Photos. What I'm looking for, of course, is Dropbox. 
And you can see that right here, that is option number nine. We can see the number nine. So I wanna go back down, I want to choose nine. Now this asks for a client ID. The output says we can normally leave this blank, so we can just hit enter. The same thing with our client secret, we can normally leave that blank as well, no need to worry about that. We're asked if we want to edit an advanced configuration, in my case I do not, so I'll say no. And then it asks, do we want to use auto config? What auto config is going to do is it's going to launch a browser, and it's going to ask us to authorize our clone to interact with our cloud provider, just as you would if you were signing into any new app or any new system. So I'm gonna say yes, and you'll see this will launch my browser, and this takes me to a Dropbox authorization page asking me to sign into Dropbox in order to link that with our clone. So I'm going to do that. I'm gonna sign in with Google. I'm gonna click my Google account. I need to verify that I do want to allow our clone to interact with Dropbox. Now, as someone who is security conscious, I certainly always take pause when I authorize any applications to interact with things like Dropbox or Google Drive. But with the case of our clone, this is open source. There are tons of open source contributors. So I know that people have combed through that and have not found data tracking attempts in the code. But again, just realize you are opening yourself up to a little bit of a risk here. If you are really worried about that, you can go back to the R clone website and read through their documentation about creating your own client ID, that part that we skipped over and just left as the default blank value. You certainly can do that to add in some security. In my case, I'm going to click the allow button to continue here. Then you can see my success message saying we're all done, please go back to our clone. So I can close this browser and now we see my Dropbox instance listed here in the remotes. We need to say, yes, this is okay by entering Y, and then it will continue. We are able to either quit. We can do some things against this existing remote. We can delete that. We can copy it, rename it. In my case, I want to create another new remote. So I'm going to say N once again. I'm going to name this one Google for my Google Drive instance. As we did previously, we want to find Google Drive in this output, and you can see here that in this case, this is option number 13. So I'm gonna go back down, I'm gonna enter 13. Again, I'm going to leave my client ID and client secret blank. Here's something different from what we saw with the Dropbox. We need to choose what type of access we want to give to this drive. In my case, I'm going to allow full drive access to be able to completely copy and alter everything that I need to. Here we have a root folder ID. We need to enter a string value. This is another option that we can just leave blank and hit enter. Same thing with the service account file. I can hit enter with that. Again, I'm asked, do I want to edit the advanced configuration? I'm gonna say no, and I do want to use auto config. So I will enter Y for yes and hit enter. Once again, this is going to launch my browser. It's going to ask me to choose my Google account. So I will click on that. And as we saw with the Dropbox, we need to allow the trust here between our clone and my Google account, so I can click Allow. And again, we see a success telling us we're all done. Go back to our clone. And we are asked, do we want to configure this as a team drive? I do not, so I will say N for no. And now we have our Google remote listed here as well. We need to confirm that this is okay by entering Y. And now we see both of our remotes are configured. I have one for Dropbox and one for Google. Now, as a note here, once I'm finished with all of this data transfer, I'm going to delete both of these remotes from our clone, and then I'm going to go in individually into my Dropbox account and into my Google account, and I am going to remove the authorization that I gave our clone so that it doesn't have any ongoing access. Again, just a good idea from a security perspective to do that. So I can say Q here to quit this configuration. Now we're back on our remotes window. If I refresh this, we're gonna see both of those remotes show up here. We see my Dropbox and my Google. And to look inside of those, all I have to do is double click. Let's start with Dropbox. You can see that it loads my full Dropbox file structure. I have a folder in here named test, and I have a couple of documents in there just to show you how this works in this video. I have a docx file, a Word document, and I have an MP4 video file. 
If I go back to the remotes tab, I can also launch Google as well. And I already have a folder in there named test, but that folder you can see it's loading and it's empty. There's nothing in it at the moment. I'm finished with my R clone browser for the time being. I'm going to go ahead and close this out. And I'm going to go back here to my terminal. I'm going to clear this off just to make things a little clean for us. And if we want to interact with this through the terminal, we do have some R clone commands we can use. I can say R clone list remotes. And you can see my Dropbox remote and my Google remote. Now, if I want to see what's inside a particular file structure, I can do that as well from this terminal. I can say R clone LS, a list command. That's a typical command used within Linux or Ubuntu. I want to enter my remote first, which you can see from the output above is Dropbox followed by a colon. Then I want to follow that with the path for the folder that I want to look inside of. In my case, I had a folder called test right under the main Dropbox folder. So if I use that, we can see both my Word document and my MP4. If I arrow up and do an LS against my Google Drive under that same folder, underscore test, this is going to come back as empty, no output, just as I would expect. Now, one thing that I really like, if I want to check the differences between these folders, I can say R clone check and I can indicate each of my remotes. So I'll say Dropbox followed by the specific path that I want to check against. By the way, if you put only Dropbox colon in there, it's going to compare your entire Dropbox folder to the Google Drive folder. That's a lot of data, so I don't want to do that at this moment. And I want to enter my second remote here. Google colon underscore test. So what this is doing, it's going to check the differences between the test folder in my Dropbox and the test folder in my Google Drive. I'm going to hit enter and you can see specifically here file test dot docx not found in Google Drive. And we also see test dot mp4 file is not found in Google Drive. We have two files missing two differences found. So I like that as a quick way to see the differences, especially after I'm done copying. So let's talk about how we can easily copy things over into my other remote. To do that with our clone, we'll say our clone copy. And I want to say Dropbox colon underscore test. That is the source that I want to copy from. And I want that to copy to Google colon underscore test. And in my case, I'm going to end with a dash capital P flag. What this does is it allows me to watch the progress of the file transfer. I can see the percentage that it's complete. I just like that as a visual confirmation. Without that flag, the terminal just kind of sits empty and you don't really know what's going on. So I like to see that progress. So I'm going to hit enter. And you can see the transfer has started. Of course, the Word document transferred really quickly. It'll take just a little bit longer on that video file because it is a bit larger. Again, you can see how that dash P flag works, being able to see the progress of our transfer. And now we're all done. So if I just arrow up and again run this check command, this time we should see a different story. And we do. We see that this time zero differences were found. We found two matching files. So that lets me know that my copy command was successful. I can also arrow all the way up and do an LS inside this Google test folder. And now we see both of those files inside of Google, whereas previously that was blank. We can also now look visually in our R clone browser as well. If we want additional confirmation of this, we can launch our Google remote. If I drill down into my test folder, we now see both of these test documents inside of that folder as I would want. So this may or may not be relevant to you, depending on if you have a need to transfer a large amount of data between cloud providers and to verify that that was copied. Again, in my case, I have literally terabytes of data and it was going to be incredibly painful to do that in a manual manner. So I've been looking around for a more automated, a more streamlined way to do that. And this free tool, R clone is a great solution that I found. That's all for now. If you'd like to support this channel, please consider subscribing, leaving a comment, or sharing this video with someone you think may enjoy it. That's the best way you can support what I'm doing. 
If you'd like to support the content I'm creating even more, please consider checking out the membership links found in the video description. I hope you found this content useful, and I want to thank you sincerely for watching.